Hey guys, welcome to the show this week. I'm Chad Hoover and we are on the Collins River, Middle Tennessee, just outside of Cookville and hooking up with Nick Adams from Tea and Moving Waters. You've seen him on a couple of shows, smashing gorilla smallmouth and big old toothy musky. So today we're doing that. We're chasing big musky and I got my special guest, Mr. Joe Denham, guy's hilarious and his brother Jim. I just met him and uh, got some questionable fashion taste. But we're gonna get out there and try to catch some big old fish. It's like it's snowing. The sun hitting them. It's like golden snow. You know, Nick, it must blow people's minds that there are fish that big or as big as the ones that you guys are catching in these little bitty rivers in Tennessee. Yeah, a lot of people don't even know there's muskie in Tennessee. Right. I mean, for a long time, I didn't even know about it. Yeah, well, there's some really big fish in small rivers like this. I mean, there are muskie over 50 inches in this little small river. I mean, they, in pre-spawn, they can be up to 40 pounds. I mean, it's unbelievable you have such small waters with big fish. And there's also smallmouth in this river that are five and six pounds. One of the cool things about musky fishing is sometimes you get a little bite catch, like it's a pretty little smallmouth there. A little big old musky crankbait. All right, fat little buddy. A nice little smallie here, laying right back here on that rock shelf, and uh, he was pretty hungry, which is good. Didn't hit real hard, hit fairly easy, and just uh, took it, took it pretty well. And uh, nice fish, nice markings. Probably what, two pounds? Be some good dinner if we were hungry and we needed it. See you later, buddy. Go tell your friends where you got it. We're so fortunate to live and be able to fish in an area such as Middle Tennessee because there's just so much moving water all around Nashville. Within a two hour radius of Nashville, I don't even think you could fish all the moving water. And at, here at TN Moving Waters, one thing we try to do is explore all the time. Uh, JG and I, will just take whole days and just drive around to find new waters to just strive to put you in an area where there's no people and fish that are untouched that don't see lures and just grow to amazing sizes in these small rivers and streams. If you decide you want to go chase muskie yourself, there's a few things you need to start off with. The first thing is a big net, like something like this. You know, you want something the fish can fit in and it'll hold it in it, in the water. Because you don't ever want to take the muskie out of the water except for a picture. Another thing is a pair of big, long pliers. 11 inch pliers work great to get those hooks out so you don't get your fingers in their mouth. Hook cutters are excellent. A muskie is hooked deep. You don't want to rip the hook out of their mouth. Just give it a snip, comes right out. Another thing to facilitate getting their mouth open jaw spreaders. You just put that in their mouth, holds their mouth open, works great. Another thing you always want to bring with you is a first aid kit. Muskie, of course, have lots of teeth. You stick in your hand in there to get the hooks out, and chances are you're going to get cut. So always bring some super glue and band-aids with you. So it's weird how I met Chad Hoover, or Carl Hoover, Craig, that Chad, I, anyway, Chad I think, I think his name's Chad. Uh, met him on Craigslist at a truck stop somewhere in Texarkana, I think. And, uh, well I think we should probably talk about something else. All right Joe, so 
so in the show in the show intro I told everybody you were funny and this doesn't exactly inspire funny because we're out here in the middle of beauty and catching fish and floating and just getting away from everything but you got a joke or something just an off the cuffer that you can throw out there so being out here on the water like this reminds me of my grandpappy he used to take me fishing and uh do you know what he told me Chad what's before that? he before he kicked the bucket what's that he said uh looky here uh how far do you think I can kick this bucket? <laughs> it's my grandpappy. It's one of a kind. Just turned 38. It's a weird family. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, as much as we um, all want to catch a muskie on a topwater, I think I'm going to switch to a spinnerbait. And uh, with a lot of flash, it's super bright out right now. There's a lot of shad in the water. And uh, I'm going to start hitting these laydowns. I got a good shot at catching a smallmouth, but they're not really hitting the top water right now, so I'm gonna shoot for the muskie with a uh, half ounce Strike King spinnerbait. A muskie? Yeah. Oh, cool, I'll come net it. Going for a little Tennessee sleigh ride. I hope I got him outside the mouth. Yeah, I'll let you it. net it. I'm coming. <laughs> you get me getting soaking wet? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> that was awesome. Here we go. Nice, brother. There we go. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna pull up and beach the kayaks right here and get out so we can make sure we get a good, safe release. He did a beautiful hook set there. Pretty, pretty fish, man. Yep. Got it. Look at that right there. <laughs> getting bigger. Yeah. <sighs> It's one of the great things about the measuring device on the bending branches paddles. You can keep the fish in the water and get a good measurement. The fish is right at 37 inches and gorgeous. <laughs> oh, there she goes. And you know what? She got me. I, uh, I'm gonna have to pull out the first aid kit and do a little emergency thumb repair, but I had her by the top of the head and her tooth come through the top of the jaw and got me. So bleeding pretty good. But it was worth it to get that big old musky and uh we're gonna keep pushing down the river try to get a big one we're gonna super glue this thing up and put a little antiseptic on it and be on our way what's antiseptic creek water <laughs> yeah, yeah a little tennessee antiseptic yeah. <laughs> all right so let me show you what i caught the fish on and what i do really well with for pretty much every species in the spring this is a uh half ounce strike king I like that darker back in the skirt, gives it a little bit of contrast. I like the chartreuse and the white. Always like the, the trailer hook. And then something to help you remember this really easy is uh, I'm a big fan of a four, four and a half in April. So late March, if it starts to get warm or it's April weather, that number four willow leaf is deadly. Uh, just like in the Big Bass Breakdown, I took a little bit of um, concave out of it, flattens it out, gives it a little bit more uh, arc, a little wider. Um, rotation creates more flash and makes the bait rock a bit and it makes that kicker blade shimmy more now one of the things that I've started using for my spinner baits is a little bit higher speed reel and this lose um, TPG 1 is an 8.3 to 1 gear ratio and the thing about when you're flowing down a river and you're moving and you're trying to draw the bait to you or you're trying to run it across pools is you need that extra speed because you're closing in on the bait so i was using a seven foot extra heavy rod it was a bass rod but i caught a muskie on it had no problem handling it but that 8.3 to 1 and a spinner bait in moving water especially when the shad are the primary forage is a deadly combination so that's what we got the fish on today and that is our big fish breakdown now let's go catch another one.